Awesome. Thank you for that background, Alex. I actually just learned about the Catholic workers um, just this past year, and I found out that they actually have two houses here in Albuquerque, too. It's a very interesting stuff. My next question for you um, was about terrorism enhancement uh, sentencing. So what is it and why is Renezchek's case so important for us to understand terrorism enhancement? So similar to um, similar to what I was talking about, how, you know, Jessica did a press conference and she owned up what, to what she did. She was expecting to spend some time in prison. Um, she was... She was initially charged with nine felonies and was facing like over 120 years in federal prison. And she ended up taking a plea agreement to um, conspiracy, which is the only one that had a zero, a zero to 20, so no mandatory minimum sentencing guideline. So in theory, the judge could have said, you know, you serve this much time on house arrest, there's time served, understood the implications of the climate crisis, given time served. Um, so that was kind of like what we were going into, but not long before sentencing, we heard that the federal government was going to pursue this terrorism enhancement at Jessica's sentencing. Honestly, Jessica's legal team, as well as many of us, including Jessica, didn't think it had any chance of sticking um, because the grounds that the federal government was using to justify their use of the terrorism enhancement was actually not her actions as much as it was her words. So in order for something to be considered terrorism, according to the federal government, um, you have to directly, you know, attack the government or government employees um, in like retribution or to influence government conduct with, um, you know, violence or so forth. Jessica targeted a private corporation, the Dakota Access Pipeline, at least on paper, um, is a private corporation. It is not a government entity. The pipeline is not a public pipeline. It's a private pipeline. Um, you know, so nothing about the pipeline was government property. But what the feds used, and they even said was their gold star evidence, was that at some points in Jessica's life while protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline, she critiqued the regulatory process of the government. And so we're seeing a situation where the federal government is justifying and a judge is agreeing um, that the use of the terrorism enhancement is not because of Jessica's actions, um, but because she critiqued the regulatory, the process of the government. So it's, it's deeply a free speech issue. Um, and I think people um, like don't, don't realize that. You know, she was never charged with any crime of terrorism. Um, she was never indicted on any crime of terrorism. It was only an enhancement that was added at her sentencing. So her actions are not what are at play, it's her speech. Um, and so I think that should terrify all of us because um, this is a new precedent that's being set um, that really has implications on everyone, whether you engage in you know, civil disobedience or not. Wow. I, so where did these terrorism enhancements come from? Like, uh, is this related to like legislation that was career policies created like in response to the war on terror? Like, yeah, what is what is the inception of, of these charges or the enhancement? Yeah, so this specific enhancement came after the Oklahoma City bombing of the um, FBI building and um, but after that, it was kind of, it has been morphed a few times. So that's kind of where it originated. But after 9-11, it, um, it was changed even more. Specific language was, um, specific language was changed. And then we saw these enhancements used um, during the Green Scare in the early 2000s against animal rights activists um, specifically. And since then, you know, there was very little outcry about that when it was used um, against environmental activists. Um, but since then, we never saw it used until Jessica. So it had been you know, two decades since we've seen these enhancements used against, um, you know, protesters um, in the country. Wow. So, and we're seeing that terrorism charges are being applied kind of more liberally now. Um, just after forest protector Tortuga was murdered in Atlanta, 
recently. 20 arrest warrants uh, for forest protectors were issued, slapping them with terrorism charges, though none of them had uh, seriously injured anyone or committed any violent crimes. And so what are the consequences of redefining terrorism this way? Yeah, so, you know, when... Um... So when Jessica was originally um, preparing for her trial, we didn't really have a big campaign or support team in place. You know, Jessica is a very like um, um, independent person in a way where um, she had like her spiritual community guiding her, which was a community of nuns that she was living with before she went to prison. And it wasn't until at the sentencing when we were there that the judge applied the terrorism enhancement and um, luckily let Jessica self-surrender at a later date, which was also ironic because if the judge thought Jessica was a terrorist, why then would she let her leave the courtroom and self-surrender after her sentencing at a later date, which was like two months later. But luckily that was the case. And so we were able to be with Jessica after this terrorism enhancement was implied. And that's when we sat down and we were like, whoa, this is way bigger than Jessica. And Jessica's like, yes, this is way bigger than my case because this terrorism enhancement was applied. And that kind of bore in the appeal process, this clemency process, and this like this public thing. Because right after we said Jessica, what happens to Jessica happens to all of us. She's the first and she won't be the last. And I think what's important to see is that in, in Atlanta, um, the, the governor had been calling them domestic terrorists for a long time. And the initial charges that were domestic terror charges in Atlanta came in December. Um, and then, you know, Tor Tortuguita was murdered a month later. And I think um, what's like really clear is that um, when you call someone a terrorist, when a state calls anyone a terrorist, it's a political move. Um, and it's a political move to dehumanize them to the point in the public eye that you can then violate their civil rights uh, in broad daylight. In the case of Tortuguita, you can murder them in broad daylight in a public park. Um, and you can throw them into jail cells for indefinite times based on things that, you know, may or may not be, you know, constitution, you know, the may not be terrorism or not. And so we're seeing um, a clear agenda from the fossil fuel industry being implemented here by um, governments at the federal level and at the state level to call people terrorists to continue pushing through fossil fuel projects, you know, as the climate crisis escalates. And I think what's important in Jessica's case is uh, this was not random, you know, 84 Congress members asked the Department of Justice by name to call Jessica a domestic terrorist, as well as asked um, the Department of Justice to call the valve turners domestic terrorists. And at the same time, the Department of Homeland Security um, compared the valve turners to, uh, you know, mass killers and white supremacists um, on terms of a threat level. So this has all been a long time in the making. Um, and again, I, I, it's painful to say, but just as we were saying, Jessica wasn't going to be the last with terrorism. I think we're going to see that Tortuguita isn't going to be the last because at the state level and Georgia, um, there has been on, the terrorism rhetoric from the state has only ramped up after it has not calmed down in any way.